What is going on guys? The 2020 XFL season was unfortunately shut down early because of the coronavirus outbreak. Vince McMahon's second go around with his beloved professional football league will certainly look different in 2021, especially if some of the top stars bolt for the NFL. It's also like the third go around, but you know what I'm saying. Sure, the XFL isn't anywhere close to being as advanced as the NFL in terms of skill level. But remember when Kurt Warner went from arena football to NFL MVP, Super Bowl champion, and Hall of Famer? Or when Warren Moon went from CFL superstar to NFL legend? There's always room for players to come over from other leagues and carve out a special career in the NFL. And what's to say this crop of XFL players are any different? Here is a look at 12 XFL players from 2020 who deserve a shot in the NFL. And though we tweak this idea just a bit, a big shout out to Max Napoli's for suggestion Suggesting this video or Max Napoli's I have no idea how to say your name but that's okay sorry number 12 Cameron artist pain the Auburn product earned a first-team all SEC selection in 2014 and he was drafted by the Carolina Panthers in the fifth round 174th overall but like some of the other former NFLers now in the XFL artist pain just didn't receive enough opportunities he was on a Carolina team loaded with quality rushers this obviously included dual threat quarterback Cam Newton veteran Jonathan Stewart and current franchise star Christian McCaffrey artist pain only only saw 118 carries over his four years with Carolina, rushing for 491 yards and five touchdowns, averaging a respectable 4.2 yards per carry. Artis Payne also caught 10 of 11 passes thrown to him, and he was on the 2015 Panthers squad that reached Super Bowl 50, losing to the Von Miller and Peyton Manning-led Denver Broncos. Artis Payne enjoyed a solid first year with the Dallas Renegades. Renegade, 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 sorry. <laughs> rushing for 241 yards and two touchdowns. His NFL experience should make him a somewhat interesting intriguing candidate for teams to take a chance on. Now that we mention it, watch Bill Belichick take Artist Payne and turn him into a 1,000 yard rusher. All right, that was a bit of an exaggeration, but someone should see what Artist Payne could do with a second go around in the NFL. Number 11, Donald Parham. The tight end never got a chance to play in the NFL. He appeared on the practice squads for both the Detroit Lions and Washington Redskins, but unfortunately he never got to actually play. The Dallas Renegades drafted him who emerged as a key weapon in their offense. He finished the XFL campaign third in receiving yards with 317. And his four touchdown receptions were tied for second most. Oh, and only four players topped his 24 receptions. He brings virtually unseen size for a tight end at six foot eight, 237 pounds. He had five catches for 76 yards and one score in a single game. The talent is there. He's six foot eight. Somebody just signed him up and chuck balls in him in the end zone. Seriously, it's that easy. Number 10, Ahmad Dixon. Baylor Bears fans will finally recall the name Ahmad Dixon. He was a linchpin in their secondary earning second team All-American and second team All-Big 12 selections in 2013. The safety was drafted in the seventh round, 248th overall by the Dallas Cowboys in 2014. However, Dixon never played a game for America's team and he bounced around from team to team in his rookie year. Dixon played 11 games in 2014, his lone NFL season. He made stops in Chicago, Miami, and Minnesota and later joined the Edmonton Eskimos of the CFL for a brief stint as well. The Los Angeles Wildcats safety was among the most dominant and noticeable defensive players during the XFL season. He had the second most tackles with 44, trailing only Steven Johnson of the Seattle Dragons. So you have a guy who performed well in college before gaining valuable NFL and CFL experience. Following a successful first year in the XFL, Dixon deserves at least a training camp invitation. May as well see what he can bring. Number nine, Dietrich Nichols. This ball hawking cornerback was a superstar during his college days at South Florida. He earned first team all ACC selections in 2015 and 17, plus a second team all SEC selection in 2016. He went undrafted but signed with the Arizona Cardinals in 2018, making just two game appearances. He was released before the 2019 campaign, eventually landing with the Houston Roughnecks. He emerged as a star with his new team, leaving the XFL with three interceptions. Sure, the XFL quarterbacks aren't as good as NFL signal callers, but it's hard to dismiss his impressive performance there. You never know when you'll find a great NFL quarterback. Chris Harris Jr. went undrafted before signing with the Broncos. Richard Sherman was a fifth round draft choice. And look where both are now. We're not saying he's going to emerge as an all pro or anything, but he might be able to surprise at the NFL level. Let's not forget how dominant he was in college. Number eight, Matt Jones. Jones served as a solid complement to lead running back Alfred Morris during his 2015 rookie season with the Washington Redskins. Jones had 490 rushing yards and three touchdowns, along with 19 receptions for 304 yards and one receiving touchdown. Jones was enjoying a tremendous first half with Washington in his sophomore year. He had 490 rushing yards and three touchdowns. This included a pair of 100 yard games. 
including 135 in a home game against the Eagles. Unfortunately, Jones suffered a knee injury midseason and lost the lead running back job. My knee. He quickly became expendable in DC, and the Redskins waived him before the 2017 campaign started. Jones was picked up by the Indianapolis Colts, but he only saw five carries for 14 yards in 2018. Thankfully, the St. Louis Battle Hawks were pleased to give him a second go at professional football. Jones relished the opportunity to finish with the league's second most rushing yards at 270. He's a few years removed from that knee injury now, and he still has it. Seeing how productive he was for two years in Washington, there's good reason to believe that Jones can still deliver in the NFL. Hopefully somebody's kind enough to give him a chance. Number seven, Daniel Williams. Williams appeared on the practice squad for a handful of NFL teams, but he never actually played a snap in the league. The XFL came calling, however, and he emerged as a star for the Tampa Bay Vipers. Williams finished second in receiving during the 2020 XFL season, posting 338 yards. His 23 receptions also placed Williams in the tie for fifth. Williams brought a good size at 6'3", 200 pounds. And hey, Adam Thielen of the Minnesota Vikings was an undrafted product before emerging as a pro bowler. Maybe Williams can follow suit and dominate at the NFL level. You know what they say. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Number six, Marquette King. NFL teams aren't usually desperate for punters. We understand that. As long as a guy can average around 45 yards per punt, you're pretty happy. But former Oakland Raiders punter Marquette King just didn't get enough credit for simply being one of the best at his position. This guy led the NFL in punting yards during the 2014 season with 4,357. Sure, you may say, but the Raiders made him punt a lot. But you still gotta have quite the leg to rack up that many punting yards in a season. King also earned a second team All-Pro selection in 2016. Helping the Raiders end a 14-year playoff drought. And let's not forget the time when Jack Del Rio used him for this epic special teams trick play. And Marquette King going to run with it. He's got a shot at a first down. He has a first down and out of bounds. King finished the 2020 XFL season with 701 punting yards. Second most in the league. You have a reliable punter with a big leg. Capable of running the odd trick play thanks to his good set of wheels. Do you really think there are 32 better punters out there in the NFL? Somebody should sign him. Number five, Raheem Moore. NFL fans, especially Bronco supporters, will always remember Raheem Moore for giving up the mile-high miracle to Jacoby Jones in the 2012 AFC Divisional Round, which Denver lost in overtime. But Moore was quietly one of the NFL's better safeties during his four seasons with the Broncos, helping them reach Super Bowl 48, which resulted in a blowout loss to the Seattle Seahawks. Moore wasn't as productive in his lone season with the Houston Texans in 2015, and he eventually landed with the AAF's Arizona Hot Shots in 2019. After the league ceased operations, Moore got another chance when he joined the DC Defenders of the XFL. Moore finished the 2020 XFL season with two interceptions, reminding the football world that he can still play. He's still young enough and can produce with the right fit on defense, which we saw during his time in Denver. If I'm an NFL GM, I'm at least giving him a training camp invitation. Number four, Devion Smith. The former Michigan star had a productive tenure with the Wolverines, earning an honorable mention for the 2016 All Big Ten team. He went undrafted in 2017, however, before signing a contract with the Miami Dolphins. Smith only appeared in five games for the Finns, catching three receptions for 27 yards. He was eventually waived before joining the Washington Redskins in 2018. However, Smith was among the final roster cuts before the 2018 campaign started. He then joined the Orlando Apollos of the AAF, but that league shut its doors before completing their inaugural season. Finally, the well-traveled Smith got another chance with the Tampa Bay Vipers, and he made the most of it. Smith finished 2020 as the XFL rushing leader, finishing with 365 yards on the ground. Given his prior NFL experience and previous success in college, he might have something left to offer an NFL club. Why not see what he can do? Running backs are so easy to find in today's NFL, and maybe Smith has something to show that the NFL hasn't seen yet. Number three, Josh Johnson. Take a quick look at the list of teams Johnson has played for on his Wikipedia page. It looks like two thirds of the NFL teams are there. So why should a guy who's already been passed around in the NFL deserve a second crack in the league? Allow me to explain. Johnson made five starts for the lowly Tampa Bay Buccaneers, four in 2009 and one in 2011. He played decently for the not so awful Washington Redskins team in his three starts during the 2018 campaign, throwing for 590 yards and three touchdowns while posting 120 yards on the ground. Johnson is a decent dual threat quarterback that just never really got a great look in the NFL. Before the 2020 XFL season was canceled. The Los Angeles Wildcats quarterback sat second in passing yards with 1,092 and second in touchdown passes with 11. Now that Johnson has more experience under his belt as a starter, he might be a suitable backup in the NFL. Somebody has to give this dude a chance. He's proven he can play. 
Number two, Cam Phillips. Despite earning a 2017 first team all ACC selection, Virginia Tech wideout Cam Phillips didn't hear his name called at the 2018 draft. The Buffalo Bills signed him as an undrafted free agent, but Phillips didn't get much of an opportunity. He only caught one pass for nine yards in his rookie year, and Phillips was waived before the start of the 2019 season. The Houston Roughnecks selected Phillips in the sixth round of the XFL draft, and he turned out to be quite the steal. He finished as a league leader in receptions with 31, receiving touchdowns with nine and receiving yards with 445. Thanks to Phillips' efforts, the Roughnecks stood at a perfect 5-0 with a league-leading 158 points. When a dude leads the XFL in every major receiving category, and when he's playing on the best team, he probably deserves a second look in the NFL. He was a star in college, and it may just be a matter of time before finding the right fit in the NFL. Number one, PJ Walker. Walker was a backup for the Indianapolis Colts in 2017 and 2018, but he saw no on-the-field action before getting released ahead of the 2019 campaign. The undrafted product, out of Temple, received interest from the Pittsburgh Steelers in the midst of their season, but the XFL wouldn't let him leave, and Walker wound up joining the powerhouse Houston Roughnecks. Walker was unquestionably the MVP of the short-lived 2020 XFL season. He finished as the league leader in every major passing category, 119 completions for 1,338 yards and 15 touchdowns against just four interceptions. That was enough for us to see. The best player in the XFL should always receive some form of interest from multiple NFL teams, and he did. The Steelers initially wanted him, but it was the Carolina Panthers who were able to scoop him up during the 2020 NFL offseason. Walker earned this opportunity. Now let's see what he can do with it. Which other XFL players deserve a shot in the NFL? Join me in the comments section below. Make sure to follow myself and TPS on social media. We post great content all the time. Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, everything, go find us. If you like this video, give it a like. It takes one click down below and subscribe to TPS. We post videos every day. Every day is a new video. Subscribe. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo. I'll see you next time. My knee.